Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. This is Sunday's edition. And right up here I have our website up. And if you please, we appreciate it if you would link up to our Twitter page. Hit that following sign and also subscribe and ring that bell to our YouTube channel so you can get future updates. And hello, Miss Vegas. Well, good morning, everyone. It's Sunday. And for those of you that are Canadian, Enjoy your Victoria Day tomorrow. It's going to be a long weekend in uh, Canada. So uh, let's just list for tomorrow because the stock market is open um, on the U.S. side. So we're going to look at uh, OTLK, Plug, Rata, Amazon, Vate, KIQ, Pepsi, and Teleria, which is TLRA. So we're going to get started with Outlook Therapies, and that is OTLK. That one had, as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, a very nice run uh, over the past couple days, and um, the volume was just phenomenal. And, you know, unfortunately, it still never really filled the gap there. Um, so there is still a good opportunity for the stock. Uh, to have a movement. Now, what I like about the stock is it had a nice run for those of you that swing traded it on Thursday because we did alert this at $1.32 and the next day it went as high as two seventy dollars uh, or two seventy two, dollars And then on Friday it did pull back. But here's what I want to talk about and just mention is that there's still a volume surge on the stock. And it is also showing a pocket pivot, which it also had a pocket pivot on Thursday. So it still shows a pocket pivot on Friday. And so when you see a pocket pivot, it's always sometimes a footprint of when the stock closes up on the volume for that day higher than any other volume for a down day in the last 10 trading days. So that's really important. Um, so keep a watch on OTLK, maybe some people have already closed the trade. They're like, okay, this is done and I'm out. So even though you're not in it, it's fine. Just keep a watch on the stock uh, because of that pocket pivot. So it could still have uh, momentum probably maybe this week. So just keep it on watch and I'll turn it over to Jim to just talk about the chart and give us some supports and resistance on this play. Jim, yeah. over to you. Yeah, this is the yearly chart right here. And pretty sure that I put up the year yeah this is the yearly chart here and we did have a year high at 1096 with a double top right there at 1096 and we did have some three black crows right here on the sell-off which now we're into that gap we did break out of the resistance level right around 186 181 somewhere in that area so we're moved up into the gap on Friday and it did have a good run on Thursday also and it was upgraded to 12 bucks by Oppenheimer so we're looking at this and the momentum and the volume is still there and the shorts kind of attacked it Friday at the end of the day but let me pull up the uh, let me pull up the five day here first I'll pull up the 20 day and you can see we had a resistance right around the 164 area and that's where we broke out of Friday Friday morning we did have a breakout and it pulled back to that support level and then once again, it created a new high first thing in the morning with two big engulfing candles. Then the rest of the day, it kind of sold off until the end of the day. And then right after hours, we had a good bounce back up to that. I would say that's resistance support high of 221. So I'm going to pull up three minute right now. And we're still bullish on this trade. If the volume continues like it did last week, this is going to be another runner to break that resistance high of 272. Pullback support no lower than 173. I don't see that happening, but I do see maybe it hitting in this little channel area of 205 to 214. Anything below that will be a strong buy if the momentum keeps up. So let's see if we can get the resistance levels we need to get to, and that'll be 233, 247, and 257 with the day high of 272. And remember, we are in that gap fill right now, and that gap resistance. Let me pull up the 20 days, see if that shows it. No, we need to go back to the six month. That gap resistance is right at 315. And if we can break that 315, we're going to go up to new level of highs, and I'm going to put $4 on it 
from the next well first I'll put this got to change this here box here then I'll be done with this trade here we got next resistance right here we got a couple of them we've got one at 335 we got to break that three dollars and we got 349 and then a high of right around four dollars and I'd like to see us print that 401 and that will be a real nice resistance for next week four dollar level and we could do that in one day if this momentum keeps up like it has in the past two so far they two daily candles look very healthy a little concerned about the wick that we had left over on Friday but let's see what happens come Monday tomorrow and the next one we're going to talk about so let me go over this one more time just in case I confused you any yeah what would be a low support there sorry the low support is going to be right around 180 173 to 187 okay pivot point which is now support at 205 to 214 and resistance highs we got a break is going to be that 247 257 to bring it to the day high of 272 and if we break that we're going to go to three <coughs> and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be plug okay so plug p-l-u-g you know what we talked about this a while back and then um, took it off the radar here, but this has to be on your watch list, especially for those of you, again, that like to swing trade or sometimes, you know, you can't always rely on scanners to alert you on picks. I mean, people sometimes rely on scanners too much. Um, and so you want the, you know, it's really important to try to find your own good setups before the scanner, because the key is sometimes to be in before the crowd on a good setup. So if you look at plug, uh, it has <clears throat> it's crossed above the 20 day and also above the 50 day if you also look at the price of the stock i mean go look at the uh historic pricing of the last couple trading sessions and you can actually see that the stock is um going higher every couple every day so you should definitely take a look at plug and the weekly chart is bullish i don't have a position on this stock at all but I will be looking at this for Monday uh, for tomorrow because, if, like I said, if you look at the stock since uh, Wednesday, the stock went as high as 233 and on Friday went as high as 256. So the volume is there as well on plug and extremely bullish for a continuation tomorrow. So keep plug on watch and I'll let Jim talk about that chart. All right. Well, you you're right. We are getting up to that 20-day res resistance level of 260, 259, and it did have it's had a real nice week run on it. All last week, it ran from a low support of 221 to 255. I noticed I did two moving average case studies last week, and that was the 34, the 50 over the 200. So I studied crossovers on the 20-day chart. We got to 34, getting ready to cross over that 200. So. We could be on to new highs next week at the three, 259 level. The 259, if we exceed that, 264. And let me pull up the six-month chart. Yeah, I've got this all charted out pretty much. We did have a six-month high of 286. So that's what our target's going to be. We're going to make our target right around 279 for next week. And if we can break that 279, we're going to go up to the $3 level. This is a beautiful weekly breakout. The RSI is moving up, so I'm kind of liking this trade. And we magnify this up a little bit. So we got a low support. Keep in mind, 244, 242 area is going to be your low support. I don't want to see it go any lower than that. If we do, it's not going to be much. 236 maybe. Resistance is we got to break the 259. And then we got to break the 279. So we got the no, let me see here. I got one more. 259, 270, and then we got to break to 279 to bring it up to $3. And that's going to be plug. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be RATA. Yeah. RATA, so RATA, RATA. You know, RATA as, as RATA Electronic Industries. You know, we've talked about this one too. And, you know, I really like this one. It says Israeli technology, as you guys know. They are a defense electronics company. They specialize in the design, development, production, and sales of electronic systems for airborne and land applications. 
they really focus for military. And um, as you can see, they did have a PR back in April that they did get over $6 million in new orders, which for delivery of RADA's software radars uh, for international counter UAV solution. They also have over a million dollars on another order for what they call the RADA's legacy avionics, which is for digital video. And um, the CEO, Dov Sala, he did say that they see a lot of good momentum for the new orders, especially their um, tactical radar business, that they're in a strong growth phase. And he mentioned that in the PR in April the 8th. Uh, he also mentioned this too. This is really important. Um, he said that the orders substantiate and make them confident with their forecast of over $40 million in revenues for 2019, which he said is implying a growth of over 40% year over year. Now, one thing to keep in mind with RADA is that they do have their earnings on the 21st, which is on Tuesday. And then we have RADA presenting at a conference in Beverly Hilton in LA. They're at the B. Riley FBR Annual Investors Conference. And the CEO, Dove Sella, will be there and he'll be doing a presentation at 3.30 in the afternoon on the 30th, uh, uh, sorry, on May 23rd. And actually on the 30th, they're going to be going to New York and he'll be there as well. And they're going to be at a technology expo at the Coveen Meeting Center in New York. So RADA is going to be very busy this week. So don't be surprised that you hear RADA, especially on scanners, in particular to a few reasons. Uh, because the, first of all, the chart is bullish, number one. So it's a very good swing trade setup. Keeps making new 52-week highs. Very strong going into earnings. Uh, they've had a lot of good sales come through. So it looks like um, from the looks of it, earnings could be pretty strong. Um, so I don't know if anyone's going to hold into earnings or not, but even if they're not, if the earnings are good, you're going to hear RADA on Wednesday really start having some action. And especially they're moving into uh, the day, a couple days later, being at a conference in Beverly Hills and then one in New York a week later. So we're going to see a lot of RADA in the next uh, week for sure. So Jim, over to you on RADA. Great website, by the way. Yep, sure is, and it sounds like they're high-tech stuff here. We did break out of oh, a yeah. double top on the three-year chart Friday. That resistance level was 386. We did have a 389 high. I noticed on the um, yearly chart here that we did have a nice little hammer right here with a top base on it, and it broke out with an engulfing candle last Tuesday, and then Friday it ended up with a three-year high at 389. And that's where it looks like where we might be. We closed at 389. And that's where we probably are right after hours. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day. Give you support levels. So I have a low support at 340. No lower than that. I mean, that's a low, low. We have your first support level. Could be right around the 371 area. If it decides to pull back a little bit. And that was the resistance high that it had to break before last week came it did pull back to that low support of 340 and then we had to break the resistance of a three-year high of 386 beautiful chart it definitely bounced up from 370 to 386 it's not a real big strong fat mover but it is moving upward on a 20-day chart from a low of 310 so that's a 70 some cent bounce right there in less than 20 days and it's kind of pulled back twice to a double pivot here at 347 348 and that's going to be your your third support your second supports at 363 with your first one at 370 we break the resistance of 389 and we're going to go ahead and go up to the four dollar area if not the pullbacks on this trade will be enormous it will be uh, beneficial I'm not going to chase it so I'm going to try to play that first support at 370 and if that fails, and I'll be telling by the tape and the level two and the moving averages, we do have it strongly. The 34 is strongly above the 200 right now, so we're not going to see a crossover. And But we are going to look at the daily one minute, and you might see one there. And yet not, no. It's still rised above it. It's respecting that 34 EMA, and we're at 389 right now with a, look to me like kind of a, 
oh, a rectangular pattern right here. So let's break that 389 next week and bring her up to four and start new resistances. And that's on the three-year chart. The next one we're going to talk about is uh, Amazon. We made a great call, or, or one of our members made a great call into close last week, and Miss Vegas is going to talk about it. Yeah, so you know what? As we know, uh, the market's, uh, you know, extremely volatile. Finding in the afternoon, earning was great. And then we obviously noticed in the afternoon it was kind of, you know, kind of like a, you know, damper where the market was pretty quiet um, and seeing a lot of things pulling back. Um, and it doesn't, you know, obviously there's trade tensions going on as well. So that's not always helping. But, you know, if you put the noise aside, there's other, there are things to trade that have nothing to do with the trade tensions. I mean, what's happened with Brad is a good example. It has nothing to do with what's going on in China. Um, but anyways, Amazon was pulling back. And, um, you know, it's one of the stocks there in the FANG. And uh, Rich uh, called, you know, he saw the pattern on the chart. And he called a day trade. So this is a day trade idea for options. And uh, he called the day trade for Amazon put for 1885 strike at 45 cents. So people did get into the stock, uh, into the option call. I think some people paid 50 and 55 cents a uh, bit by the time their order got filled. But as you can see, Jim's showing you a screen share there of uh, the option call. It went all the way up to 670 in a matter of like, I don't know, 10 minutes probably. And then it just kept going down, down, down. And obviously the put was really, really strong. And the volume kicked in, like over a thousand contracts started coming in from the 670 high. It went all the way up to um, 1830 on the ask. But last contract that I was able to capture uh, sold at 1731. So here's what we mean when sometimes a small account can grow with options. You know, if someone had an option account or trading account that they could trade options and they bought one contract. Again, it's a day trade, so it was never meant to keep until tomorrow, Monday. Um, you know, you could have used a day trade if you don't if you have the PDT rule. You would have bought one contract for 45 cents. Uh, even if you would have got filled, let's say at fifty cents, which is a fifty dollar investment, but you know that fifty bucks went all the way up to seventeen thirty. Now, obviously, you know you're not going to maybe hold all the way up to seventeen thirty. You know, even if you went as high as six seventy, you know what? You probably would have sold it, and that would have still been a phenomenal trade. I mean, this is over a thousand percent. This is just amazing. So imagine forty five dollars, fifty bucks investment turns into six hundred or even as high as 1700 I mean, that was just phenomenal. So this was over 800% option trade. So amazing, amazing call from Rich and Graham. And uh, as you can see, um, he's very particular. He doesn't trade nonstop. He only picks things that uh, look like there's some momentum and some opportunity. And this is one of them. And so if you're interested, come check out the room and you can see some of Rich's calls in real time. Jim, over to you on Amazon chart. Yeah, that was a pretty nasty sell-off. And if you look at the history on a 20-day chart, it does have some nice sell-offs. I mean, from here, we ran from at 1932 all the way to 1885. Next day, it bounced up real strong, created a new high, and then another. we had another gap down into close. So if you'd have bought a put on that when it was up there at 1964, you could have run that back down 60 bucks the next morning. Also, it repeated itself, went back up and hit that resistance high, then it pulled back. So this is one that you could get in, I bet you, almost every day, play the pullbacks and the bounces. We did have a 20-day low at 1815.75, the bottom of the double bottom. And the, the next three days, it ran all the way up to 1920. So that's a and, uh, $105 bounce right there in three days. And then the same thing happened Friday. It held up pulled back that morning, bounced up to resistance level, and then the rest of the day, the market was red. Uh, most of the day, the Dow Jones was kind of hovering, you know, up and down, but never really held a positive green note. And this would have been good and sunny. Plus, the China trade wars got more intense last week, which gave the uh, the market kind of a, a flat position, maybe, you know, even some 
real good red days and I'd really do good on the red days because when it's markets red I'm usually try to be green 99% of the time and I was last week so we did pull back to support level here at 1867 and that was a great call by Rich in the room right at the end of the day it was really excited us up and we could probably take this again you got we're right in a pivot point area on this 20-day channel actually at a lower support level I would say maybe the first support with a low support right around the 1850 and then you got another channel here last week also that was right around the 1829 area for support so this is just one to keep on watch keep them option plays in mind you know the day trade I think this is a great great trader option play chart if you ask my opinion and the next one we're going to talk and congratulations again to Rich you're a, really a, a morale booster in the room. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be VATE. It's going to be a penny stock, V-A-T-E. Okay, so I wanted to This is an OTC stock, and this company is involved in the marijuana sector. And one thing to keep this on watch, because they have zero convertible notes and also... Uh, their revenues have doubled. So this one here should be on your watch. For those of you that like those micro penny plays, uh, please keep Vate on your radar. Um, so Vate as well is also having, uh, they also have some coffee products as well. And uh, they're going to be expanding. So if you want, you should keep this on watch because uh, the fact that uh, the revenues are growing on Elevate brands and they have zero convertible notes, I mean, this to me means there's going to be no dilution on the stock. As a matter of fact, it looks like this will be the calm after the storm and it looks like the stock is setting up for some strength as well. So I think Vate should definitely be on watch for those of you that like to trade. Um, you know, went all the way up to 0 0.039. So keep that on watch. Needs to break that 200-day uh, resistance. But you know what? This looks like a good swing trade from an OTC stock perspective. But I'd like to hear what Jim has to say about that. Well, Jim's going to order some coffee from this company. All right. That's what I'm going to do right off the bat. You can have, try it out? Yeah, I'm going to try it out. to your other one, right? The last time I tried out a, a hemp coffee, we were in BCCI, and it ran out. Remember that big run on that one? I mean, that was huge, and it just ran and ran and ran. And so I'm going to probably order some of this this weekend, get ready for I head when I come back from Mexico, I'll have me some espresso. So let's look at the yearly chart on Vate. I want to pull up the year, just kind of have a glance at it. We did have some highs up here right around the 7, 8 cent area. We are coming up from a bottom which is a double bottom, and that double bottom's right around the 285 area, so that's what I'm going to call as a support level, a low support, an entry level at 285. That's 2 cents and 85, 2 point, well, you know what I'm saying, above 2.5 cents. The next resistance level is going to be, support level is going to be right here, right around the 3 cent area, kind of hard to judge. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and put this 312 in there. And then your first support is going to be right around the 334. So I'm looking for good spots to get in this trade. I do like how it does bounce up. This would be like a swing trade for everybody. We did hit a resistance high. I did notice it over here until I hit these little candles right here. That's more or less a pivot point on the year's chart right around the 3 cent, almost 4 cent area. We have a resistance up 416 with a resistance high. And I'm going to put that right in here at the base of these top. It could be in the base or the top of this candle. So let's go up to the top at 458 with a resistance breakout of right around above 5 cent, right at 5 cents. And then you have some more highs. If we can get to that 5, right now we're at 39. You know, and size proportion means a lot when you're in trades like this. Make sure it's worth your while. If it goes up a penny, try to make a hundred bucks, and that's how I play this game. You know, I'll probably buy fifty thousand shares of it for start, and that'll be about a fifteen hundred dollar investment, I think. 
fifty thousand. If I go up a penny, or we'll just go on from there. But I always like to make sure my proportion is key with the tape reading and the level two. So let's go back to the low support on this trade. I'm going to pull it up to a twenty day. I'll get a better picture of the twenty day. We do have a support level right here at three four five. And that's where I'm going to put the red line. That's going to be my first solid support. If it hits that, it could, it can. Right there, I like that 3.5. Anything below that, the 3.1 will be my next entry. And the low support right at 2.85. Resistance breakout, it's got to be right up here at the 4 cent level. And I'm going to put a little trend line right in here. I'm going to bring it right back to that engulfing candle at 3.75, maybe for a first support if that holds but that I like that three five area myself personally so I'm gonna go back to the six month and these are the resistances that we got to hit four one six four five eight and then that five cent area and if we that's gonna be a strong resistance if we can break that five cents we'll bring it up to five four seven and that's gonna be vate Definitely keep it on watch. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to get me some coffee from this company, so I'm going to put me a little star by it. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Q, I mean, KIQ. Yes, so KIQ, so technologies. I used to have a street near my house called Kelso. Uh, this company is Canadian. Uh, they provide uh, railroads, and so it's called Kelso Tech. You can check them out. Uh, they're an innovator in the railway equipment industry in North America. They also have tank trailer components and um, very nice website. Now, let me tell you something. This company had earnings already, and um, they, said they, they said they're unaudited, but uh, they got very good working capital. They got $5.6 million working capital, and most of their accounts receivables, by the way, um, all their customers pretty much pay uh, timely within 30 days, which is unheard of. Sometimes companies are past due and you're chasing them for the money. So they have good clients that pay within uh, timelines. They also have um, cash flow, additional cash flow of $802,000. Um, so the net assets of the company are $9.2 million. Now, the company is taking successful measures to improve their positive cash flow from operations. Um, they've been really focused and able to stabilize the business, to cut costs, and eliminate um, inefficient market workforce. Um, they also apparently have planned to have production rates grow from approximately 10,000 tank cars to an expected production of, get this, 22,000 tank cars between this year and of 2020. So that is significant sales growth that's gonna be coming. And um, just to mention as well, the reason I liked this stock is because of the beautiful, beautiful chart. I mean, who wouldn't like this chart? I mean, this is on a new 52 week high. This has, um, the stock is an overbought territory. Um, it's just the Bollinger Bands are good. I love the way that this closed, and I'm looking for this to have a continuation. So, Jim, let's see because, um, you know, we'll have to see which way this is going to go, right? Oh, yeah. Either up or a pullback because it had a bit of a doji bearish candle there, um, which is kind of, you know, undecided what it's going to do, but it looks bullish to me. So let's hear what you think of KIQ closed at 145 i don't know about bearish on that one that daily candle looks with that that wick i mean that wick being small like it is from that yeah i think it's going to break looks out some bullish more. to me yeah this had a 35 cent low i wish it's been one that i'd have kept on watch because the company is definitely was way oversold down here oh yeah i mean look when it was that that I mean, if you look at back, I mean, even back in March, if we would have noticed this stock, yep. this was like around the 60 cent range back in March. Yep. We're only in May, like two months later. Can you imagine you double your money in two months? And I mean, obviously, when I say something like that, I'm not saying put in $200 and hold it for two months to only make 200. 
I'm saying if someone would have, no, you know, let's say put in even 5,000 in the stock, 400% increase, they would have made like over 100% profits on a $5,000 investment as a short term swing trade. So it's on a beautiful channel here. But yeah, sort and trip continue along here. This is well, we quite interesting. Triple bottom down here right around that 40 cent area on a yearly chart and a triple bottom breakout has been nothing but an upward pattern of about 400 percent gain so here we are let me pull up a three years chart just to see if we can do something here i want i don't understand why this thing's so low here on the three year chart we do have a resistance level right around the 135 area and we did break that friday but still yet it's still a charming looking chart the rsi is up on that definitely uh, one thing i did notice when miss vegas was talking was the last earnings earnings per share grew two cents from a negative one and also their sales had more or less gained a hundred percent in that quarter to 5.67 million from 2.5 million to me that's a very impressive very notable very nice outlook they got a positive outlook too on the trade so I think this can create, we are at a double high, double top right now on a three-year chart at 144.89. You can see that by this wick right over here, this engulfing candle. This is a weekly engulf. And you can see what happened last week. We do have a trigger for it to move on up off of my moving averages. I'm using the 34 right now and the 200. We did break that 200 on the three-year chart. So I'm going to pull up the three minute, one minute. Well, that don't say much volume wasn't quite that vibrant but yet you know it's the ones you get in on the low volume that can really move a stock and so we're to go up to the I gotta go to a five day we're gonna have a low support there's another support right here right at 139 so that 139 is gonna you're right here you're at like I said a year high so we got to break that 146 a three-year high First support at 139, 140. The second support is going to be right at 134, with a low support down here at 125. So I'm going to turn that into a red line. That's going to be a strong buy, real strong buy. If we see that 125, and you know it happens, what goes up comes back down, gives you another opportunity to take these trades and get in on the bounce. So we got a 126, 125 area for low support. First support. Second supports are going to be right around the 134 with your first one right around the 140. With a resistance breakout, we do create, have created an ascending triangle right here. So it is ready to break out of that 145 area. And if we can break that 145, look for new highs into next week. Look for 10 cent intervals. 10 here, 10 there, 10 everywhere. Next one we're going to talk about, and that was a Q. I mean, KIQ. I did the same thing. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi. All right. So Pepsi, you know what? I got to say, I know Warren Buffett loves Coca-Cola, but you know what? I love Pepsi. And uh, I, not, first of all, I like the taste better. So I'm a Pepsi, I'm more loyal to Pepsi. But I want to talk, talk to you guys quickly about Pepsi. Um, so first of all, <clears throat> new 52-week high here. So for those of you that like longer term holds for investment purposes, you may want to do your due diligence and check out Pepsi. Um, but I'm going to talk about this really more from an options perspective because this had a new 52 week high and their earnings were finished. And on the earnings, uh, I just want to mention that they grew organic revenue by 5%. Um, the earnings per share went up by 3%. And the operating profit by 10%. Uh, this is fantastic. The revenue growth of 8%, both Latin America and Amina grew at 10%, which is very, very strong. Um, the CEO did mention this is one of the best quarters they've had in years. And it actually shows that they're executing the investments that they're making in the business, which um, they did discuss at the conference call. Um, they also mentioned that they did exceed their financial targets. They grew organic revenue by 3.7%. They generated, get this, $7.6 billion of free cash flow. And they returned approximately $7 billion to shareholders through dividends and share repurchase. So they have many capabilities from the brand building to research and development. Um, they have a large scale that's going to make them a very efficient operation. 
And they've also been looking at, um, you know, the mission. They have a lot of different things going on. But Pepsi is definitely super, super strong and uh, very impressed with their earnings. And uh, it's just fabulous what they've what they've done. And so I'm going to look at this from an options perspective. I will be looking at the option calls. And I think I'm going to be looking at... Let me just see here. Well, the stock here, I'm going to say I'm going to look at maybe the 135 strike. So, uh, and probably for an expiry sometime in June. I want to buy myself some time. It's going to take some time for the stock to move. It's an earnings winner. It's on a new 52-week high. Beautiful trend. I mean, this to me is just solid movement. Um, and you know what? This is is just been so strong that who would not look at this even for people that have swing trades that just don't want to invest in the company but would like a swing trade for a large cap they're going to be on this um the channel's there so i'm looking for this to go to 135 next and i'll be looking at some options tomorrow and i'll post it on twitter when i have picked the one that matches the criteria that i'm looking for jim over to you on that pepsi chart Remember to hit that link on our on our uh, website and hit that Twitter link and follow us because we did alert that Amazon. Plus, we've we've alerted we're going to be alerting this one here come Monday morning. And I do like the earnings on this thing. Oh um, yeah. The, the 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 cheat sheet here on the balance books is really nice. I mean, everything's up on it. The operating costs, the you know, I mean, operating profit is up. The net revenues up. Sales were up. Gross oh, profit it's just was green, up. Green, green, green. It's an earnings winner. Shareholder. Yeah, definitely. Yes, so let me tell you. Let's pull up the yearly chart, three year chart. We did have a double top breakout on the three year. I'm going to show you where that was. That was at the 121.94 level. And then this is a weekly. Each one of these candle stips, sticks stand as a weekly. We did have a pennant flag breakout or maybe an ascending uh, breakout after an engulfing pattern on this week right here and she did break that resistance level of 126.97 to a new high of 138.87 i think miss regus miss regus regus <laughs> regus miss vegas uh, that's the first time i've ever called you a regus i might have to look up that word but miss vegas uh is right i think this can go into to newer highs to the 135 strike area so this is going to be one that I'm going to be watching next week also. And I'm going to go ahead and put me a resistance level right here on the weekly at 130.63. We did close at 130.51. We did have a high of 130.87. So Miss Regus, I mean Miss Vegas, we're going to go to the 20-day right here. And we're going to look at a low support at maybe about 129.88. I see that. And then I also see... Oh gosh, another support level right here at 129.34 on a 20-day chart with a very low, low, low support at 128.79. And then if that don't hold, we've got the, definitely this top area, and that's going to be 128.31. So we did create new highs on the three-year, and that's beautiful. The earnings were great on the outlooks, great on this trade. We do have a double top resistant breakout on Thursday. We did go up a little bit higher on that and that resistance. And then we had a big fat, fat finger right here on Wednesday that took it up to 130.94. So that's the resistance we're going to break. We're going to break that 130.94 next week. Pull back support. Your first one, 129.88. No lower than, if it goes lower than that, you got a pivot point for the second support. That's going to be the 128 to 129.35 area with a low, low, low of 128.31. I do appreciate it if you feel like stopping this video and copy and pasting these charts for your own personal use and only your own personal use. Please do so. Write these resistance levels down. And when I call it support, it's usually from a previous consolidated breakout. And that's why I'm saying this low support is going to be 128.31 if it decides to sell off. But everything's going in the bullish pattern for this compared to the news, the forecast, and the earnings. 
And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one, and that's going to be TLRA. Yes, I have to talk about this, guys, again. Teleria, Teleria, Teleria. Why am I talking about it again? Because it's a strong chart. It's got another 52-week high. So you guys know Teleria. I talk about this a lot. And you sometimes, you know, people take their eyes off a setup. They're like, oh, you know, it's already ran. It's okay. Well, look at it again. I mean, the stock is bullish. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be surprised the stock goes to $10. It's, go it's an application software company. And software technology is hot. And Teleria is just one of those stocks that is hot. Very good company. You know what they do. They're all into taking software platforms to manage premium advertising, video advertising. Um, and that's what they do. So they make sure to help promote your brand. And they're the first video management platform as well to institute what they call comprehensive transparency initiative. And um, that you can read all about it on their website. But what they want to do is they want to have um, an additional layer of clarity for buyers and brands as you optimize your spending in the process also of helping brands feel more confident to actually spend money on the digital products. So, um, you know what, Teleria is a publishing fee. What they do is it's based on a fixed contract. So it's not based on the demand of, of the partner or demand activity level. So, um, you know, they try to make sure that, um, you know, they try to brand the product based on what is going on with your, your customers. So um, anyhow, this company is doing quite well and uh, they had their earnings as well on May the 9th. <clears throat> they had their first quarter earnings and they also had a lot of strong results. Um, they have increased, I told you, advertisers demand for what they have their CTV platform and also um, their OTT advertising opportunities across various segments. Their revenues was outstanding. I mean, the revenues were up 42%. Gross profit was up 30%. I mean, they just did a phenomenal job. Their CTV revenue was up 169% year over year. I'm telling you, this is an earnings winner. Um, I told you that they already hired this guy, Paige Bills, as their chief product officer. And this company is just poised to keep growing. So keep this on your watch. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking about this again. I'm, as, like I said, I'm not going to be shocked this goes to ten dollars or more over the, like between now and the you know the next few months. Uh, Jim, over to you on Teleria's chart. Just like the lady said, revenue increased forty two percent year over year to thirteen point six million driven by robust CTV growth of over of 169%. So that's huge. And I'm looking at the earnings right here. You can go to their website, which I've done here, and you can pull up all kinds of information about TLRA. And we have been a, a dog on this, I'm not a dog, but a, you know, a bull on this um, stock. And I'm going to pull up the year. I mean, a dog is really getting our nose into it and watching it close. We did break the three-year high last week here at 919. It did pull back 50 cents to 856. We are sit looking at a doji here with an equal base on either side, so it could go either way. Let me pull up the 20-day. We'll get a good gander at the 20-day. We did call this little channel here last week, and she did pull back right after that little channel and broke it, pulled back to support level. Right here, right around the 777 area, it did pull back to 772 with a low support at 754. But right now, we've got a new breakout on it, and it did the resistance we do have to break is going to be the 894 area. Support level is going to be right here at 855. You got three different, well, maybe I'm going to go for a low support at the 777, which I don't think we'll see. We do have a strong support level here at 839. So if it does pull back to that 839, that'll be nice. We did have a nice little ascending triangle breakout pattern on it last Thursday. If I would have noticed this on a daily, daily uh, one hour chart, you can see that pattern, how it's formed. And when you see something like that, you're gonna have a breakout the next day in most cases. 
we did break out with two engulfing candles on an hour and then right it opened created a doji and when that doji hit that resistance at 894 it pulled back to that first support where I have driven up on this breakout channel of 855 so look at that as your solid support anything lower you got that 839 to look at and that'll be a nice little entry buy because of the ascending triangle double top breakout on a 20 day so we got to look at the new highs like I said we are at a three year high so anything beyond this is going to be that 919 and if we can break that 919 we'll see Mrs. Vegas's 10 and this is going to be TLRA and that was the last one we're going to talk about and remember the earnings were outstanding on this the yep. forecast was outstanding and I uh, also want to mention that you know what if you are in our chat room um, and you can't J trade I mean I was alerting the stock last week uh, on actually May the 9th, I did alert a reversal trade idea. And I said to everyone that this is a good swing trade. It's on 52 week highs, the stock should hold, and that you should trade the stock as a swing trade on a reversal. And if you would have been in the room and you would have seen this, um, you could see May the 9th, it did go to seven, it pulled back. Like, I mean, it went as high as 824. But when I saw it pull back at 752, I called the reversal and if even you would have day traded that as a swing trade into the next day, the next day, May the 10th, that went to $8 and 50 cents. So you would have made a dollar a share just on that reversal play. Um, the other thing too, is this has been super strong. I've been calling this in the room constantly as a swing trade. It's had pullbacks. Yes, it has, but it's always made higher highs over time. So it's still in a bullish channel earnings winner and a one to definitely watch all right and that's it so everyone thank you so much for listening following subscribing commenting like i said if you have any feedback good or bad please comment in the video we make the videos for you um, a lot of these ideas are swing trades or potentially could be day trades as well looking for strong charts good setups to help everyone make money um, there's no reason why you can't make money. If you don't need to be trading full time to make money, you can just have a good swing trade, have stop losses that are comfortable for your account. And you know what? I love playing sometimes these 52 week highs because they're super strong, especially when earnings are done. Um, they're very good setups. So, anyways, I hope everyone has a great day tomorrow and we'll see you again and we'll give you some more trading ideas. Jim, any last words from you? Yeah, we have the chat room service uh, sign up page on our website here. You'll see it right here under chat room service. Please follow instructions and sign up to our to our uh, website. Also, we do have Women's Day every day. All women get a free month if they join up to the uh, chat service. And we do like the women traders. They have a better mindset sometimes than men do. I have to vouch to that. We also um, have our Twitter hookup right here. If we do appreciate it, if, if you're not a member of, the, of our chat room, you could always follow us on Twitter. And we also have uh, access to our stock twit pages, Pintergeist, Facebook, YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's very important that you ring that bell for future updates. And that's about what I want to say. And I'm going on vacation next Friday, and I'll be back on Monday. So... I'm going to take day okay, off Okay, but Friday. you're going to be here this week, Jim. So huh? we don't do videos Friday. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be here. So you'll be talking to the viewers, no problem. Yeah. But next Sunday, we won't be doing a video because Jim will be away. That's what I was trying so to get to. That's great. And I will be away as well. So <clears throat> it's yeah. going to be um, the Memorial Day long weekend. So we're both going to be away. But we will be here this week. So we'll get you guys uh, ideas for this week up until Thursday inclusive. And I'll uh, get you ready up to, for the whole week. And then next weekend, we will not be having a video. And uh, then we'll keep you posted. So have a great trading day tomorrow, everyone. And talk to you soon. This is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. We do appreciate your company. Today's date's May 19th, 2019. And we love stocks.